guys, you're welcome to another episode of Analyze This, where we basically touch on everything from finance, business, in fact, anything that touches your pocket, and we uh, basically get to analyze it on the show. Uh, my name is Tunji Andrews, and with me is my co-host. I'm Arisa Ogu, and today we're going to be talking about something that's on everyone's mind. Um, are we round the corner from a recession? So typically, a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative growth. And last quarter, or rather the first quarter of 2016, we had minus 13.7% as compared to the previous quarter. So the way it looks with all the different indicators, it looks like we're a month away from a recession. So Mr. Economist, are we headed towards a recession or not? You make it look like it's my fault. Um, okay, first of all, to, to try and basically um, understand recession, you have to understand what GDP is. So, um, say in the time of um, ancient Rome, right, uh, the indicator to know if a country was rich or vibrant was how much gold and silver they had, right? Uh, but in recent times, we've um, changed that methodology and we're now using economic activity. So what is economic activity? It's about how many times you go um, uh, to, to the market to buy whatever it is you buy, how many times your business buys and sells. So that is basically economic activity. And um, what happened in between the first quarter of 2015 and the first quarter of 2016 is that if you compare those two quarters, uh, economy shrank by 13%. Now, in real terms, what it means is that any business, anybody is 13% less likely to have somebody patronize them. And it gets scary because if you enter into a recession, as IRS has said, uh, it's, uh, you've had two consecutive quarters of negative growth. So two consecutive quarters of you having less likely a chance to have customers come into your business. <laughs> it's really not a very good time because, uh, so our, the question again is, are we on the brink of a recession? So basically We've we had are. two months of the <laughs> second quarter, which kind of don't, is not looking re really good. So except of course, um, mana falls from heaven in the form of dollars and naira. Um, we're, we're, we're really like- Yeah, support. and all the usual indications of um, of a recession are there. Like, so we have double digit inflation, unemployment is rising, um, household spending has reduced. People as it is are not all... having tomatoes to cook soup anymore. I know. Using carrots. Like, there are not I all these recipes online about tom tomato less stew. Yeah. yeah. So it's basically the fact that we're just we're at the point where things are not as vibrant as they used to be. Okay, so let's talk about how this affects businesses. Um, and to do that, I think that we should, we should delve a little bit into the contributions, the individual contributions of the sectors. So typically, you would think that um, Nigeria is an oil producing country, and that's where we get most of our income from. But it's interesting to see that like oil and gas as a sector doesn't actually contribute that much to our GT GDP. So mm -hmm. it's, around, it's less than 12%. So it's sectors like the service sector and agriculture, agriculture that, uh, that have like a bigger impact on you know GDP. So even if we might be going into a recession, are those um, individual sectors growing or you well, know, actually contracting? They're contracting because if you see uh, uh, the manufacturing index, we actually shrank there. Um, business uh, factories are closing down around Nigeria, so people people are being laid off. Um, I mean, and it has a multiplier effect, right? So if a factory closes down. Either I was a worker in the factory, I, I get laid off, so I don't have uh, wages anymore. You I can't, can't, pay, I school can't pay school fees. I can't pay my rent, and my landlord now doesn't have enough money to go and do what he has to do. You know, it just it's a multiplier effect, and it goes around the entire economy. So, um, one way or the other, we're all in this together. And I think more importantly, maybe we what we need to be doing as individuals, as businesses, is looking at the sectors that you know, have relatively high revenue, but what can we be doing? What problems can we solve within those industries so that they can become bigger employers of labor and then increase our GDP? So for example, entertainment. Mm -hmm. The entertainment industry is something that, that you know, grew. it's been growing. That exactly. Grew, so, grew. so looking at the figures, like agriculture is um, contracting, oil and gas doesn't um, employ a lot of labor anyway, so the contribution is not as much as you think. But sectors like ent entertainment were um, 
were growing, but because they're more or less one-man businesses, they employ some labor, but they don't employ enough. Yeah, so what true. kind of infrastructure do we need to be putting in those um, sectors so that they can um, have more of an Im impact on the economy? Uh, well, I think, the, the, I mean, it's, it's real. The, you, have to have, um, you have to have those uh, sectors that employ a lot of labor. So um, infrastructure, building of infrastructure, building of houses, roads, um, agriculture, for instance. Uh, those are labor-intensive um, uh, businesses. Manufacturing, again. Uh, so, I mean, at the end of the day, you still kind of look at the, you kind of you know, have an eye on the government and <laughs> yeah, say, you guys, you, you guys are the ones that need to, to sort this thing out. But um, I think a few of, uh, we went to the streets and got a few people to talk about how, what recession is and what they think it is. And we'll be coming back and talking to you about what we think you should do at this time. So let's take it to the streets. <laughs> Uh, generally, everybody is feeling the heat. Business last year uh, is not what it is today because um, uh, for those companies like mine that deal with uh, uh, foreign exchange and then all things you source from uh, for, your, for your business are all sourced outside, you know what the foreign exchange is telling when you talk about CBN holding back uh, foreign exchange to the level that is being uh, done today. So it's really affecting business. Most businesses are not doing as well as they did last year. It's affected it um, negatively to a, a huge extent. To be perfectly honest with you, we're probably making a quarter of what we were making a year and a half ago today. And that's the truth. It's, 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 um, it's also affecting having the, the number of staff. I've had to um, let some people go, unfortunately, not because um, they weren't doing a good job, but just because it's I can't afford to pay them, so I've had to let them go. So yeah, it's, it's really affecting us. Being a business owner, I own uh, Wow Nails. I noticed that people, you know, they don't come in to do their nails as often. So if they'd come maybe twice a month, they'll come in once a month. And when they come in, they, they haggle more like, oh, can I have 500 naira off? Or you can see they're definitely like trying to cut corners and not, they're not as, you know, carefree about their spending, basically. I've been doing this for 10 years. And in the last year, a little over a year, it's, it's never been this bad. It's, it's actually quite scary, to be perfectly honest with you. It's, it's very bad. The cost of stock has gone up. The availability of good stock is very rare. It just is affecting everything negatively. Um, I think we definitely have to work harder to persuade our customers to come back. Because, you know, painting nails, you can paint your nails at home, but it's just that if you want that professional finish, you'll come into the salon. So I think um, we are trying to invest in, like, loyalty schemes to get them to come back more. And then also in terms of the products that we use, we've kind of stopped bringing in as more new lines. Because what we do is we're a specialty nail art studio. So we used to have, like, you know, Louboutin and Chanel and all those polishes that we'd import from abroad. So we still offer those lines, but we don't kind of... We're not as up to date on all the trends just because it's so, with the exchange rate fluctuation and everything, it's just so expensive. And then obviously we can't pass that cost on to the customer. So we've just had to be more creative in terms of how we, you know, keep current. Um, business like last year compared to this year, actually we have problem with price issue. As in compared to last year, we have more customers just because the price was uh, very affordable for people to get what they want. But this year, the difference between last year and this year is that we're having problem with price because now our customers these days are come, they don't really go for the same quality we're selling the last year again. What they want now is the inferior. They want the cheaper one, and which we don't sell here. We go for the quality, that is why we are here. Unlike uh, last year, more customers, affordable price, turnover, business. But now, we beg for customers to come and buy. And it's really affecting our income. It's really affecting our income right now. And we are facing a lot of challenges based on this, our Nigeria economic situation. <laughs> I love what that lady said about the nails because I can totally relate. I feel the need to do my nails a little bit less. But in general, it makes you think about recession-proof businesses. Yeah. So um, things <clears throat> like the beauty industry in general are things that don't get that affected or as affected by a recession because women are always going to be worried they about their skin, nice. their hair, their nails. So even if they're not, you know, their purchasing power is not as much, they 
will still do those things. Just a lot, a little bit yeah. less. Yeah. So other recession-proof businesses are things like food, but it's only recession-proof if yeah, you're not importing exactly. it. Because mm -hmm. right now we're overly dependent on um, imported food. So if we can find ways, there are still opportunities in that agricultural sector, but mm -hmm. if we can find ways to you know, produce here and get the whole value chain here sorted. It, yeah, sorted, it would be it would be awesome. Like it would be recession proof. So no one is saying go and become a farmer because that's not necessarily the only way. I so think it's about involved in agriculture. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think it's about looking at the value the entire value chain and figuring out where to plug yourself in. So where can you solve a problem? For example, your um your in your neighborhood maybe they're like ten to fifteen far fish farmers but you there's no they can't go to market as easily because they can't package themselves you mm -hmm. know the way that they need to or they have logistics issues so where can you come in as in to sort of aggregate Processing, those, packaging exactly, transportation whatever it is marketing that you can do. pr exactly like even if a recession sounds very um, scary. scary there's still opportunities don't you of think? course um i i would say this right um I want to take us back a bit, right? It, um, everyone remembers the story of Joseph, Joseph and Pharaoh. And um, at the time he came up with, uh, Pharaoh had this dream, quickly juggle your minds a bit. Uh, he had this dream and he was like, who's going to help me understand this? And Joseph basically made him understand that we're going to ha they were going to have seven years of plenty, then seven years of famine. Yeah. Kind of like what is happening to Nigeria <laughs> right now. But um, the idea was that in the seven years of uh, plenty, they saved a lot and in that seven years of farming, right, what happened was that there was a wealth transfer, right? So a lot of the richer nations in the world became poor because they didn't have grain. They, might have, they, they had gold, but you can't eat gold, <laughs> really. You have to eat. So everybody was going to Egypt to try and get food. So Egypt was buying up land. Egypt was buying up slaves. It was buying up cattle. It, it basically became a world power in that time. So I'm kind of saying... There is an opportunity right now, even if uh, you're thinking maybe this is a time for me to just go into my shell and just wait out this recession. No, there's, an, yeah. there's actually an incentive for you to get out there, keep working, just try and make a lot of money. And Because, you know, typically, you know, we, we, this happens every time. Like during a recession, exactly. everyone is complaining and then there'll be the few people who get up and then they become millionaires after the fact. The recession, so yeah. By the time we're entering a boom, there's a new crop of uh, millionaires. In fact, there's so many businesses that started out during a recession. Microsoft, GE, it's time to get creative the world. People. The world is filled with such stories all through history because in yeah. every recession, empires crumble and new ones are built. So this is a time for you to, to get very think, creative and start thinking, looking out, out there, the you know, you might just... So, in person. fact, my favorite thing to say these days is, what do you complain about every day? Figure out what that problem is, break it down into sections or tasks, and find out where you are um, uniquely positioned to solve those problems. I think that it, the more creative that we become in solving the problems around us that we're complaining about, you know, the more likely that you're going to be one of those millionaires after the recession um, subsides hopefully <laughs> hopefully and, and 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 basically the the general thing is that even for us as a nation this is a time when we can also look inwards and start to think of how we can get through this because obviously if we're creative enough as a nation we can emerge stronger from this and basically go from a point of negative growth to being one of the um, largest economies in the world so it, as individuals as a nation as states it's time to look inwards and get very creative Thank you for watching this episode of Analyze This. My name is RSL Ugu. You can follow me on Instagram at Smart Money RSL. And my name is Tunji Andrews. We can continue the conversation. The handle is at Ndani TV. The hashtag is Analyze This. My Twitter handle is at Tunji Andrews. Till next time. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Files, aka Files the Bad Guy. Well, in today's lesson, I will teach you how to subscribe to the Indani TV channel. All you have to do is click on this. So simple, straightforward. <laughs>